Hi Emma, so thank you for agreeing to review this case study with me about um, Jonathan in babies. And I know that this is real, it's something that really happened, it's a true situation. And both you and I were around, you know, at the time, obviously as the nursery manager, you led on how to deal with and how to respond um, in this case. So, um, although the case study is presented in the course, I thought it might be a good idea just for me to read it out, to set the scene, to get those juices flowing, and maybe just feel free to interject if you want to add anything in while I'm explaining, and then maybe we can just talk about w your reflections on this and what you did and how you tackled it. Is that okay? Sure. Um, so, Jonathan is in the baby group at Rainbow. He's recently turned one years old. He's two parents, mum and dad, and he lives with them. One of the grandmas um, is quite involved, picks up once a week. Both parents work full time, and if I remember, in quite demanding jobs. Um, and Jonathan's their first child. So that's the scene. <laughs> um, Jonathan often comes to nursery with clothes that are too big for him. Uh, and that don't fit. This can cause some difficulties with him trying to stand or move, for example, because he can trip on the clothes that he wears. Uh, often his clothes are dirty, and sometimes he comes in in the morning wearing the same outfit that he left nursery in um, the day before. Um, and so by that time, they're usually quite dirty. He's not always clean, and sometimes your staff in the baby room have actually bathed him and bathed him. Is that right? Yeah. So how would you decide that in, in the nursery that you need to bathe a child? How would that have come about? Well, I guess, yeah. I mean, dirty face, smelly, maybe nappy. Jonathan's parents, forgetful about things they need to bring, often run out of wipes, often run out of nappies, forget sometimes to bring sheets and blankets at the beginning of the week on a Sunday, doesn't always come with sufficient spare clothes, nappy, often full when he arrives um, to nursery, first to leave, no, first to first arrive, arrive. last to leave. to leave, sometimes parents are late without, you know, informing us they're a few minutes late. Um, what are your, just thinking back on that, case um what are your kind of concerns what would your um concerns that you would be talking to the team about in the kind of things that we've mentioned well i guess um my main concern would be that they don't have enough time for their child right that they're working too hard uh, and they and they don't have enough time um, and they're not giving him the attention that he needs from isn't parents. that a reality for a lot of working parents that they don't always have the time that they the time that they need and sometimes forget things isn't that just a reality of living a busy life i think when you have children you have to be organized in some way um so that you you have everything that your child needs it's um you know you're responsible for that child um so yeah i, I think it is a reality but you know you might have parents who are at the top end who are very organized and have you know, down to the things written on their bag where what they need to bring every day to the GAN. Um, to parents like Jonathan's who never remember anything. Um, Maybe a bit and, chaotic. Yeah, and I guess different priorities as well. Okay. And so, so what are your concerns there? That they might not have time for the child and, I mean, in terms of... Thinking child protection, thinking safeguarding, what would your concerns around that be? Uh, the, the concern would be neglect, that they're not taking care of their child in the, um, in the way he should be cared for. Um, but it's not necessarily willful neglect. No, it's not. It's um, possibly... <laughs> Um, well, I can tell you what happened with this family or... Um, yeah, so, I mean, you spoke to the team about this? I spoke to the team about it. And were there other things and other behaviours 
and other like little things that you noticed that added to the picture? I mean, was this the whole story? I think so. I don't think I don't remember anything else. Um, he, you know, he was very happy when his parents picked him up. He was happy dropping off um, in the mornings. I don't um, remember anything specific. Generally, he was a happy child. Um, but yeah. just not necessarily all of his care needs being met. Yeah. So, so what did you do? What were the remind me? What were the steps so that were taken? The staff, um, the team, they brought their concerns to me first. Um, so I asked them to start to record it if they were concerned about it. Um, so they recorded daily how he came in with what clothes, what he left with at the end of the day as well. Um, and that's important, isn't it? So you don't just end up with anecdotal evidence of someone saying, well, there was this time when this happened and he's always like this and it turns out that that actually only happened on two occasions. When you're recording things, you can see really consistently, which either proves or disproves, you know, a feeling that people have. When you start making a record, you might say, ah, it's only once in a while. We all forget that, you know, once in a while or whatever. Yeah. Or the opposite. Or you can see, well, there's actually really a pattern here of, of things that are being missed, being forgotten, not enough attention being paid to things. And what kind of picture did the records show? The, it showed that, um, that these things weren't being met, that he... He was coming in daily, you know, in dirty clothes, in clothes that he left, that we changed him um, the day before, um, and four nappies. <coughs> and just, it, this would happened quite a few years ago, but if I, you know, if this was happening now, I would probably um, use a lot of picture evidence as well, um, and not just writing. Okay, so... The team recorded their observations, what, in the daily diary, or did you have a specific recording document that you created? We had a log for, specifically for him. Okay, so you recorded basically all your observations, you built up a picture, you discussed it with the team. What's the next step? The next step is to meet with the parents. Um, we have the observations. We... And can I just ask, if it's um, suspected um, neglect, why why would you be talking to the parents in that situation rather than saying, okay, there's a child neglect here, we need to make a reference? So, I mean, it's not our desire to report someone to, um, to social services. Uh, the first thing that we want to do, especially if it's um, for a child who's, who's not at high risk and not at immediate danger, we want to find out more about the situation and try and help the family um, to understand or to see or to um, realise that... So to help them understand that there are elements of neglect possibly going on here, um, but what can we do to turn it around? To turn it around, we would... Um, Find out yeah, what so the, that's what you want. I mean, that's what you want from the situation is to meet with the parents and help and find to help, out. Uh, sorry, yeah, I thought you were yeah. asking a question. Yes, to help turn it around. We don't want them to. Um, we don't want to get someone in trouble. That's not. That's not definitely not what we want. And probably even if the social work team did become involved, and let's face it, in this situation, even if you made a referral, it's very unlikely that there would be any kind of intervention from social workers. But if there was, it would be about having a conversation with the parents, seeing what support they can put in, helping the parents to be maybe more organised. Yeah. And, and in this kind of setting, that's something that would be our first step, wouldn't it, rather than making a referral. OK, so just so I understand, you um, met, with the, um, met with the team, You've got together records of what's going on and uh, had some clear, factual, objective information that you could then share with the parents. You decided that you wanted to meet with the parents. 
how did how did you go about setting up that meeting did you send them a formal letter invite them to come in and meet with you and me you know what how how was how did you go about that um i i think i i remember um we called them to um to set a meeting we wanted to meet with them pretty immediately because we didn't want our concerns to grow um and um so quick actions yeah important. quick actions we met them the next morning we set a meeting for the morning so that um we knew they would be available um at drop off and the meeting was with myself and the team leader of the group um and if i remember you kind of sat back a bit and let the team leader lead kind of with her concerns and share her observations so you were there in a more kind of supportive role absolutely. for both sides kind of yeah absolutely and i just um facilitated the meeting really um the the team leader was finding out um about you know the she asked about the routine at home the uh, morning routine nighttime routine and um, and spoke to the parents about it. So how did the parents kind of respond when the team leader said, look, these are our concerns, he's coming in dirty clothes that we put on the day before, he's coming in hungry, he's coming in in um, dirty? Well, they were very surprised actually. Um, they were surprised that we called a meeting. They... Um, but also actually grateful, if I remember. They were grateful that we called a meeting to discuss our concerns. And they were surprised at kind of what was happening. So when you held up a mirror and said, look at what's going on, they were surprised at kind of reflecting on their own behaviour or they were surprised that you kind of spoke to them about these issues and said, we need to meet about this. I think they were surprised about their own behaviour. Uh, because they didn't really see anything wrong with it at the time um, until we pointed it out they you know they were busy people they had to get to work at a certain time and they you know Jonathan started when he was really little so when he was little he just was drinking milk and he would come um, in a baby grow for example and they would just bring him to the gang but he got older times changed and um, he he changed. So, 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 was there a backstory to what was going on? Did they offer any explanations of why he was coming in full nappies, dirty clothes? So dirty, the full nappies hungry. and the, the clothes. So they would um, basically they lived across the road. They would bring him straight from bed um, to the gun before they went to work, and they just assumed that. We changed him during the day and um, got him ready for the day. Um, so, you know, once we said that, they were like, of course we'll change him, you know, we'll get him ready at home. So they part didn't... of this conversation was about teaching them how to be parents and saying this is, you, you can't outsource this to the nursery. He's getting older now. You need to be responsible for getting dressed. Yeah. Eating, changing. And, and for him to have a routine. Right. He would, you know, wake up, get ready and go to and go to nursery um, ready and put together. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what, the clothes and the clothes well, situation. Well, the clothes and... situation was actually... Because um, he was coming in clothes that were too big for him as well. Yeah. Which we said in the case study was having a negative effect on his development because he was finding it hard to move, hard to walk, tripping over things, stuff was too big for him. So the clothes, they said that everything that they they dress him in are hand-me-downs, so they get given clothes for him. Um, and they just pulled out of the cupboard and packed spare clothes that they just got together. Um, they didn't realise or they didn't necessarily try it on him beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, they just assumed that he was, um, that it would fit him. Um, but they said that they would be more organised with that and have it more, you know, organised in his bedroom. 
Okay. And did you feel that that was a successful meeting with the parents? Absolutely. Why? Absolutely. Um, because the parents were um, accepting and they understood what we were saying. They, they weren't... Um, um, negative. They, they weren't negative in the meeting. They weren't trying to make excuses or to hide things or to... Um, that's what I felt. They were so it was an open, they were and honest, transparent. Yeah, they were honest. They were grateful as well. I think that was the main um, point of the meeting. And maybe having that conversation with them gave you some more context of what was going on at home, and maybe some explanation about why things were the way they were. Yeah, they had busy jobs. Um, they lived across the road, so. They didn't, I, mean, I guess they didn't make such a separation between home and gang. Right, um, right. And he was with us from such a young age. Right. And do you feel that after having had this conversation with the parents, did things change? Definitely. They changed. They changed immediately. Um, he was coming to gang. Um, he was coming to nursery dressed. And he had breakfast at home. Um, and parents were not as scatty as as we we had seen so they were more more focused and more um organized well with... how did you notice that how did you monitor that because surely you know you've done this recording you had a meeting it's not just kind of then sit back and hope for the best there must have been some kind of monitoring that took place between you the team leader the parents what did that look like the kind of aftercare from the meeting? Yeah, the parents, um, the team leader kept um, close contact with the parents, um, checking, in, checking in with them weekly um, for the first couple of weeks. I think she gave them a phone call to make sure, to, to see how it was going and how their morning routines were um, and night routines. And we just saw a significant difference. Um, and sending personal uh, reminders maybe about things that they'd Forgot, did their forgetfulness reduce? No, forgetfulness, I think, is something that, that people um, have. Um, but yes, if we would send them a message to remind them to bring, you know, something the next day, then they would. Um, but there was, uh, you know, they would come with their Sunday bag um, ready for the week, and there was always one thing missing. But Right, and that's not necessarily neglect, is it? No. That's just disorganised parenting. And maybe sometimes when you're looking at neglect issues, disorganised parenting can lead to neglectful situations, which, as you've said, can have a negative impact on child development. And I guess your role as the manager and the, and the team leaders is to make sure that what's going on at home and the kind of home culture doesn't negatively impact on the parents and maybe the right supports put in place to help um, to help parents, I guess, be the best parents they can. Mm -hmm. um, so would you say there was any learning that came out of this case study? Um, learning from the parent or from the parents, from the, from the team, from how to deal with this situation. Well, I think something from the team, uh, learning for the team was, um, I think I, one of the the team were were a bit judgmental. Uh, not the team leader, but um, one of the team was a bit judgmental. They're always doing this and they're doing that, and um, it's because they don't care. Right. And actually, it wasn't because they don't care. They were very caring parents. And so that's, I think, learning from the team, um, for the team, that there's and, something that they And learned. these things about forgetting things and coming in dirty, coming in with nappies, was any of that discussed with the parents prior to this meeting? Had the team leader been kind of drip, dripping those concerns, those low-level concerns before they became a bigger issue? Um, I don't think it... I, um, I think the forget for the forgetting things, yes, of course, we, we asked for things. and um, um, But no, I think we kept a, a log of that. And um, 
and discussed it at the meeting. So maybe one of the learning points is to, you know, once, as soon as you have these concerns, is to open that dialogue, have a conversation with the parents, because sometimes you can change the direction mm -hmm. of, of the case study. Yeah. Emma, thank you for discussing that. I'm sure for people watching the video, just hearing about how you dealt with the the case study of, you know, a, a possible neglectful situation that, let's face it, when you read that case study, sounds pretty horrific, but by having a conversation, meeting, open, honest, transparent communication, clear records, you can kind of change the direction, um, well, the direction that that child's life is going in, really. So, well done for making such an...